Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. He's talking about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. So it seems like things have finally gotten back to normal in the Hot 100. Well, as normal as you can expect in the aftermath of Drake and Beyonce laying waste the place for most of the past month, but for now things seem to have fallen back into their established momentum, or even major album releases don't really hit with the same impact. I mean, I was expecting another week of chaos thanks to Ariana Grande and Dangerous Woman, but outside of one returning entry that we will talk about, the biggest story this week, the finale of The Voice. Seriously. Hell, even the top 10 isn't all that interesting this week. One Dance by Drake featuring Kyla and Wizkid holds into the number one thanks to dominance on streaming and airplay. Even if it's not holding the top spot in sales or have any YouTube, at this point, it might not need it. Designers Panda, on the other hand, could do with whatever could get at number two, because airplay has peaked and great streaming and solid sales can only hold it up for so long. I would say that Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake would be a significant challenger at number three, but despite ruling sales and huge airplay gains, it doesn't really have the streaming to get any higher and I can't really see this retaking number one. And that's not factoring in Work From Home by Fifth Harmony featuring Ty Dolla Sign, which rose up to number four on modest airplay gains, decent sales, and YouTube dominance. If only streaming was stronger, it'd have a real shot at crushing its competition. And considering that the album that 727 will be impacting the charts next week, it might just get there. And then there's Don't Let Me Down by The Chainsmokers featuring Daya rising up to number five, which might have stronger streaming and sales and comparable airplay, but it's got no YouTube for that extra boost to get any higher, but didn't even really need it to rise above seven years by Lucas Graham, which despite okay sales took heavy losses in all other categories, especially airplay to slide down to number six. Managed to cling above I Took a Pill in Ibiza by Mike Posner holding off at number seven, which had even weaker sales and also is losing airplay, but it does have YouTube and that might keep its losses from getting any worse. But now we've got our first returning entry to the top 10, Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande at number eight. And I'll admit to being a little bit surprised that Ariana didn't make more of an impact on the Hot 100 this week, considering how many videos she pushed in order to play every single angle. And it does kind of show, with Dangerous Woman finally getting some streaming traction to match good sales and stronger airplay, that it might be too little too late at this point. The last two spots on our top 10, they belong to Rihanna, with Needed Me rising up to number 9 based on barely inexplicable streaming traction that's only barely echoed on the radio. Seriously, I don't understand why anyone likes that song. And work with Drake sliding down to number 10 as it loses in all categories yet again. I predict this being gone really quite soon. And on that topic are losers and dropouts. Not that many in the latter category this week and all fairly easy to explain. Promise by Kidding featuring Fetty Wap ends its unsteady chart run and Stitches by Shawn Mendes, Roses by the Chainsmokers featuring Roses and Don't by Bryson Tiller all end runs that probably went longer than they should have in the first place. And hell, most of the losers are fairly easy to predict too. Mostly because of Drake's second win driven by Spotify starting to sputter out. Hype went down to 45, 9 fell down to 72, You With Me slid down to 82, Fire and Desire skipped down to 85, and Redemption drooped down to 95. And hell, if you managed to take No by Megan Trainor down hard to 35 thanks to a total collapse on the airplay, and Wherever I Go by One Republic down off its debut to 81, that's only really a good thing in my books. Granted, it can't all be good news, because Beyonce took additional hits with Hold Up sliding down to 93, and Formation continuing down to 75. And not only that, Kiss It Better by Rihanna continued its downward trajectory to 91. I would say I was okay with that, given Rihanna did give you a new single this week that we'll be discussing in a bit, but it's not Desperado and it's really not better than Kiss It Better, so I'm still kind of irked by this. But where the charts got the most traffic was in returning entries and gains, and let's start off with the latter category, because it really was a mixed bag. For starters, I have no idea what the hell is happening with country radio right now, because while I understand Church Bells by Carrie Underwood rising back up to 67, and the sudden boost for Head Over Boots by John Party to 71 late in its run, coupled with another resurgence for Lights Come On by Jason Aldean up to 70, Country Radio, these aren't bad songs, but make up your damn mind with what you want here. Now I say all that because in comparison with pop, uh, yikes, there's a lot of bland mediocrity here. Just like Fire by Pink continues a meteoric rise to 16 for no adequately explained reason besides the Billboard Awards. Sheet Thrills by C and Sean Paul recovers again up to 24, basically on being off-brand Rihanna. And Messing Around by Pitbull and Enrique Iglesias is only up to 66 because the hook is ripped off from REO Speedwagon, and not because anyone bothered to read through the lyrics of this clumsy mess 
of a song. Granted, when you look at hip hop, it somehow gets even worse, with I Hate You, I Love You by Nash and Olivia Bryan somehow being even more boring than g Easy at 59, Uber Everywhere by Me and TYO being forgettable Drek up to 61, and All the Way Up by Fat Joe, Remy Ma, and French Montana being the revival that remotely nobody asked for at 38. Then there's Faded by Alan Walker. It recovered up to 80, and that's really all I have to say about the song. It never really stuck with me. But where things seem to be getting the most interesting of all places is from Rock, as Unsteady by X Ambassadors picked up to 86, and The Sound of Silence covered from Disturbed picked up to again to 49. I'm not saying either of these songs represent a rock revival that I still do is think is coming sooner rather than later on the charts, but it is kind of interesting to see. And hell, you could even argue that the return of Ophelia by the Lumineers to the charts at 97 could tie into that. But really, outside of Wake Up by Fetty Wap coming back and being forgettable at 99, and Youth by Troy Sivan making the newest comeback to 87, these really aren't the returning entries that I really care about this week. The first of those is Into You by Ariana Grande, the only other song from Dangerous Woman to gain any sort of traction. And considering it's one of the better songs from that album, I'm not complaining. I like seeing it back at 51. But the biggest story is Send My Love to Your New Lover by Adele, riding considerable sales and a ton of YouTube all the way up to 26. And I'm going to repeat what I said when I covered her third album, 25. The song just doesn't really do it for me at all. The lyrics aren't close to Adele's best. I don't like the chord progression on the hook. And I can't help but feel that this is a step towards a much less interesting and emotionally compelling sound from the dramatic heights that Adele has reached in the past. She's had better singles, and working with Max Martin and Shellback really isn't the way to go, at least for me. But moving past all that, let's talk about our new arrivals. Starting off with number 100, Down That Row by Allison Ford. So here's something peculiar that I've noticed with The Voice. In the absence of a clear dominating talent in a season, the finale of the show can be a little bit surprising with the who's ultimately chosen, especially if it's not the crowd favorite. Now this was the case with Craig Wayne Boyd a couple seasons back, and it looks to be the case here as well with Allison Porter, who despite winning had the lowest charting song in the Hot 100. And really, I kind of see why, because this is only okay at best. I got my usual gripes against the production from The Voice. It's rushed, it's completely lacking in any sort of texture, and this sort of in inspirational major chord heavy pop country ballad is an easy sell here and really is kind of bland. The odd thing about the track is that it seems to hit its climax point midway through and then just kind of meanders back to a hook that doesn't really have the same bombast. But as for her singer, I'm not all that impressed. She's got a potent voice but man she seems pitchy and nasal on those high notes. In other words, I don't expect to see or hear anything from her anytime soon. You know like the majority of winners from The Voice. Next, number 98, Hasta El Amanecer by Nicky Jam. Okay, sorry for the pronunciation there, but there's a part of me that still finds it kind of weird that Nicky Jam is back on the Hot 100. Odds are if you don't follow the Spanish charts or remember his brief moment in popularity thanks to Daddy Yankee in the mid-2000s, the most you'll remember Nicky Jam from is from a team up with Enrique Iglesias with El Perdón last year, which despite never cracking the top 50, managed to scrape into the very bottom of the year-end Hot 100 of 2015. In any case, I originally said this single was part of a comeback album, and that never actually happened, so I'm not making that mistake again with his follow-up song, which is talking the Latin charts and has a huge YouTube presence, but it's only now breaking onto the Hot 100. And, eh, again, it's okay, I guess. I can't say I'm entirely won over by Nicky Jam's auto-tune crooning as these very stiff reggae-inspired synths. They only switch up into the music video for a buzzy breakdown that's got hints of a trap vibe. As for the lyrics, well, from what I found translated, it's not honestly all that attractive, as Nicky Jam seems to disregard even knowing the basic things about this girl in favor of just hooking up, which she seems kind of ambivalent to as she tells him on the second verse to back off. As it is, it's not immediately bad. I don't really hate this, but I'm not exactly hooked on it either, if I'm being honest. Number 96, Gold by Kiara. So 
I've said in the past that you can occasionally spot upcoming hits by keeping an eye on the international charts. And as such, I've seen this song floating around a couple of places, most specifically in Australia, where it cracked the top five. And I have no idea why, because I can't say that I like this song at all. A big factor is the production. I've said in the past that trap production doesn't really do luxury rap a lot of favors. It always feels too dark and moody and dour. And that's even more true for by the numbers pop music, which this is. Granted, Kiara is taking more than just the hollow, minimalist production room hip hop. She also brought the disaffected bragging and the casual infidelity. Although in this case, I have no idea why she doesn't just dump this guy if she's so much better off hooking up with his brother. She doesn't need him to let her go. She can just move on here on her own. But with the casual grills reference, a fashion statement that I will never understand for the record, then all the pitch shifting and the choppy sampling, this song seems to be trying for a modern flexing anthem, and yet it's so sparse and lacking any sort of investment or punch that it becomes remarkably easy for me to just tune it out. So yeah, can't say I'm a fan of this. I'd probably skip it. Number 94, Every Breath You Take by Hannah Huston. And every word you say, every game you play, every night you stay, I'll be watching you. Now before we get into the song in detail, let's talk about the original. Widely hailed as the police's biggest song and one of the best songs of all time. And yet, I can't really call it one of my favorites, mostly because the framing of the song is wonky as hell. Sure, there's a great bass roll, it's got a pretty sweet guitar line, Sting sounds great on it, and you can tell from interviews that he was trying to write a song delving into the complicated, obsessive love that comes for an ex that he's now stalking. And yet the song doesn't really capture that element of danger that would match the lyrical intent and go darker. That is something that this cover from The Voice actually tries. Sure, the groove is non-existent, but switching the piano melody into minor chords and by Hannah Huston playing things a little bit more raw intensity, she gets a fair bit closer to the darkness that Sting never managed to capture. I do wish the song actually had more of the iconic groove instead of playing things a little bit more classy. And again, production from The Voice does nobody any favors. But you know what? I actually like this a lot more than I expected. It's a good interpretation. Nice work. Number 90, From the Ground Up by Dan and Shay. So for better and I will be all you need Beside you I'll stand Through the good and the bad We'll give all that we have And we'll build this love From the ground up you know, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Dan and Shay. The pop country duo have a reputation for writing very breezy songs that are more lyrically interesting than they have any right to be, even if the production isn't always on their side. This is the lead-off single from their sophomore album, and honestly, it's pretty much exactly what I expected, and it's surprisingly likable. Sure, it's as straightforward of a love song as you'll find anywhere, it seems destined to be a country wedding song staple, but all the strengths that highlighted Dan and Shay's debut are present here. Real vocal harmonies, a melodic hook in the guitars that's gratefully accented by some strings and even some steel guitar, and even when the percussion is a little bit too processed at the beginning, it still manages to transfer into some real drums by the second verse. If I were to nitpick, I do think that vocal runs on the bridge with a very thin electric guitar are kind of a reach for the duo, and understated might have made some a little bit more impact, but overall, there's a heartfelt sincerity to this song that managed to make even the slightly corny nature of the song connect all the same. So, yeah, I like this. I'll take it. Number 83, Love on the Brain by Rihanna. So, uh, Rihanna, this isn't Desperado. Okay, yeah, you know what? I've gone on about this before. I'll stop it now. But when, seriously, when you have a legitimately great song and instead decided to release this stab at soulful doo-wop with this song, uh, it's not bad, I guess. Most of the credit is going to give to the guitar touch organ and the deeper drums more than Rihanna herself. Most because she doesn't really deliver the raw presence to completely pull off a song like this. Either that or she just doesn't have the pipes to really deliver here. But the incredibly thin melisma on the second verse is pretty much proof of that. But the biggest issue I've had with this, it came in the lyrics. Where Rihanna describes a love that throws her against the wall and beats her black and blue but fucks her so good. And then combined with backing vocals that sound like they're from Chris Brown himself, it can't but draw attention to that incident eight years ago. And sure, I get that was the point in the context of the album, but it's genuinely unsettling to hear outside of that context and a really kind of an uncomfortable track to revisit. Not precisely bad, I get why it's here coming off the Billboard Awards, but she's definitely released better songs. 
close and of the single she's got out right now kiss it better a lot stronger i prefer to hear that number 73 lonesome broken and blue by adam wakefield Lonesome, broken, and blue And now we've got the final song coming off The Voice, and this might be the most country song you'd have heard outside of Chris Stapleton on the Hot 100 in years. Prominent banjo and fiddles to drive the melody, even to hit it with sounds like some pedal steel guitar around the edges, and Adam Wakefield trying to get over a breakup, even though he knows it's gonna hurt like hell. And yet for as much as you would think this would be my easy favorite for this week, given how much texture it has, I don't know, it's not really clicking the way I would like. Maybe it's the unneeded female backing vocals track, which doesn't really remotely fit for a breakup song like this. Maybe it's that hint of an organ or a composition that played some more major chords which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Or maybe it's how Adam Wakefield just isn't as expressive as a singer as I'd hope he'd be. Hell, if you give this to Alan Jackson or Jason Eady or Chris Young or even Chris Stapleton himself, I think this might have had more impact, but as it is, eh, it's pretty good, but it really should have been better. So that was our week, and honestly it's a pretty decent one. Not a lot of standouts for the worst. I'm giving it to Gold by Kiara, but it's more bland than outright awful, with dishonorable mention going to down that wrote for Allison Porter for the exact same reason. Best? Okay, from the ground up by Dan and Shea runs away with it, but honorable mention is kind of tricky between the two voice contestants. And you know, I'm ultimately going to give it to Lonesome Broken and Blue for instrumentation that's such an organic and refreshing take on the charts, even though I definitely appreciate what Hannah Huston was trying to do with that police cover. Overall, now that things have settled back into the rhythm on the Hot 100, it'll be interesting to see what will come up next with no really big releases in the immediate horizon. So, we'll see coming up next week, but until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.